morning. Good morning. As you come in, go ahead and share this live stream. Invite somebody on. Invite somebody on. Welcome to Wow and Root Empowerment. I am Sherry Downs. Thank you guys for joining. Today, I want to talk to you concerning walking in the spirit. How to walk in the spirit. I know at times as believers, we enter into our new life with Christ and we have to begin to journey in such a way that we learn how to walk in the spirit and we learn how to partner with the spirit of God. So how to walk in the spirit. The Bible says that we should walk in the spirit so that we don't fulfill the lust of the flesh. And today I wanna to talk to you and just share some empowerment with you concerning walking in the spirit. Last week we talked about how you uh, delight in the Lord. And I want to uh, zero in on the Holy Spirit and his position in our lives. Good morning. Thank you for joining his position in our lives and what it means to fully embrace the spirit of God, what it means to fully walk in God's spirit so that we don't fulfill the lust of the flesh so that we can accomplish the will of God in our lives. And walking in the spirit um, sometimes we don't really understand what that means of partnering with the Holy Spirit, walking in God's spirit. We talked about the things that you need to do to delight in the Lord, but in order to be joined to Christ and in order to manifest the nature of Christ and manifest as a son and daughter of God, we have to learn how to fully embrace God's spirit and how to walk in the spirit. What do I mean by walking in the spirit? I mean a continual daily living, a continual um, partnership, friendship, fellowship with God's spirit in order to manifest the life that you were destined to live. Type that in the comments. I'm walking in the spirit. Many times as believers, we want to ascend into the heights of God, but we haven't grasped and understood how to walk fully with God and be in God to manifest the life that God originally intended. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for all of those that are watching, those that will watch the replay. We pray, Father, that this message that you have given us through the Holy Spirit will empower those that hear live and those that are watching the replay. As you come in, let me know you are watching and where you are watching from. Share the video. Invite somebody on. We are on Facebook Live every Wednesday and Friday, just sharing empowerment as the spirit of the Lord graces us and empowers us to do so. So walking in the spirit, walking in the supernatural, walking in the spirit of God, walking in your new identity, walking in the newness of life that you were afforded because of the redemption, the life, death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Romans 8, 7 through 9 says, the mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. Those who are in the realm of the flesh cannot please God. You, however, are not in the flesh. You are not in the realm of the flesh, but you are in the realm 
of the spirit. If indeed the spirit of God lives in you. And if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, they are not, they do not belong to Christ. Remember, we talked about the spirit being the nature of a thing, the nature of this, the nature of that. When we talk about the spirit of, the spirit of kindness, the spirit of meekness, the spirit of this, it is the nature, the natural inclination of a thing. It is what you are naturally inclined to do. So when we walk in the spirit, when we walk in the spirit, our mind is not governed by the flesh. The flesh is hostile towards God. So when we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, and we are adopted and baptized into the body of believers, we become a new creation born in the spirit born out of Adam and into Jesus Christ. So what we have to learn and grow to do is how to partner with God's spirit, the Holy Spirit, who is imparted unto you when you receive Christ. Now, we can expand ourselves to the degree that the Holy Spirit takes up full control and full residence of our lives, that we are led and guided by his spirit in our our minds are governed by the spirit, meaning we have the mind of Christ because we are no longer under Adam. We are in Christ. So we have to put our perspective on which realm we live in. We live in the spiritual realm. We are foreigners to this world. We are pilgrims, as Paul says, passing through. We are, um, not, we are in the world, but not of it. When you accept Jesus Christ, you are not a individual that is um, on the same realm as those who are not in Christ. You have translated out of darkness and into the marvelous light. It is a spiritual experience by faith. It is a spiritual experience that you can only receive it as the spirit of revelation opens your understanding and your comprehension to receive that truth. So you are a spirit being at the moment of salvation when you accept Jesus Christ. So then your mind has to take on the mind of Christ, the nature of Christ, how Christ thought, the things that Christ dwelled on. Jesus said this, I I'm working the works of him who has sent me while it is day. My meat is, do the, is to do the will of my father. I came to finish what the works that he started. So we see in the mind of Jesus, his mind began to be governed to do his father's business. Even when he was 12 years old and his mother was looking for him and they, his mother and his father was looking for him while they were on their way um, leaving the temple and they realized Jesus wasn't with them. And so when they went back to look for Jesus, his answer to them searching for him was, did you not know I would be about my father's business? So he always had a mindset to do the work of the Lord. Even at 12 years old, his mind was governed to work for God, to accomplish the will of God. So when we have a mind that is governed by the spirit of God, the Holy Spirit that lives in us wants to achieve God's will through us. So we don't want to grieve the Holy Spirit in that we are not partnering with him. We are not yielding to him. We are not in tune with him. It's to the degree that he can accomplish God's will through each and every born um, new created believer. It is not just the pastors, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, the teachers. No, he wants to fulfill God's will, the works of God through each and every uh, new created being. That's you and that's me. He wants to fulfill God's will through your life, whatever sphere of influence you have. He wants to manifest God's will through that. He wants to platform you, whether you're in agriculture, construction, 
education, whatever sphere of influence you find yourself in, the Holy Spirit wants to manifest God's will through you so that he can glorify God through your life so that he can lift you up and you can be a testament of who God is in the earth. So when we have our minds governed by the flesh, the flesh is hostile towards God. The flesh does not want to submit to God. The ways of the flesh, the works of the flesh, how the flesh responds. So how do we live in the spirit? We have to have an awareness and an understanding and a revelation of what Jesus has done at the cross. We have to understand and respect the cross in order for us to fully step into a fellowship and relationship with the Holy Spirit. When we respect the cross, when we understand the gruesome death that Jesus went through, when we receive by faith the life, death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, what that means for everybody in the earth, that we get a do-over. We are no longer subject to the flesh. We are no longer subject to sin. We have liberty in him. We have freedom in him to become the sons and daughters of the most high God. We have a restart in Jesus Christ. The uh, scripture says, my sheep know my voice and a stranger they will not follow. So we have to begin to know and respond to the voice of the Lord. John 10 chapter 27 through 28 says, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. Here it is. And I give unto them eternal life and they shall never perish, neither shall any man. So here it is. When you accept Jesus Christ as your personal savior, when you are adopted into the body of Christ, you have been translated out of death into life. You are a new class of being. You start living a supernatural life. Type in the comments, I live in the spirit realm. You want to live, move, and have your being in Jesus Christ. So he says, my sheep know my voice. My sheep also hear my voice. My sheep are attentive to my voice and a stranger they will not follow. God knows his sheep and his sheep hear him. He knows how to speak to you. He knows how to get your attention. He knows how to send the right messages to you, put the right images before you. He knows how to move you and bring you into the place of fulfillment. But here it is. We have to learn to yield to him. We have to learn what it's like to follow the Holy Spirit. The letter, which is the law, which is the um, written word of God, it is death, but the spirit gives life. Here it is. Jesus died so that the spirit of God can be placed on the inside of you so that the spirit can come and reconcile you back to God so that you can come and be the creation that God originally intended you to be. The enemy changed the metabolic nature of humanity. So Jesus Christ came back to renew you back to your original state, to have God's nature in you, to be able to yield to God's presence, to be able to fellowship with God. And we do that by way of the spirit. So when we begin to walk in the spirit, we don't fulfill the lust of the flesh. Our mind is governed by God's spirit, by God's nature, having the mind of Christ. It's not about how you feel when you walk in the spirit. When you walk in the spirit, it is by living from the inner man. Type in the comments, I need to get in touch with the inner man. It is by living in the inner man living from the inside out, learning how to listen to the spirit of God that is in you, learning how to listen from the 
for the promptings and the guidance of the spirit from in you outwardly. We can't live outside in. We have to live inside out. So you have to get in touch with the inner man, learning how to be led and guided by the spirit, learning how to be led from your spirit man and what that looks like knowing the nature of Christ, knowing the nature of God, being able to follow the gentle nudges and promptings of the spirit, being able to get quiet in fellowship with the spirit, growing in your um, yieldedness to the spirit, desiring the spirit. We talked about this last week. And if you didn't li listen to that video, you want to go back and listen to how to delight in the Lord for Wednesday and Friday. But what we want to do is when we're delighting in God, we are learning how to fellowship with the Holy Spirit. So the disciples had Jesus Christ as their teacher. The disciples had Jesus Christ walking with them while he was on earth, teaching them, guiding them, instructing them. But here it is in the New Testament, as New Testament believers, we have the Holy Spirit who is walking with us, guiding us, comforting us, showing, directing our path. He is the spirit of counsel. He is the spirit of truth. The scripture says, and when he, the spirit of truth comes, he will lead you and guide you into all truth. Now, everybody does not have the spirit of God. Everybody does not have the spirit of God. It, it, it tells us right here. If you don't have the nature of, of Christ, you do not belong to Christ. I'll read it again. Romans 8, chapter 7 through 9. The mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. It is hostile to the cross, what Jesus Christ died for. It doesn't respect Jesus' life, death, burial, and resurrection. The mind that is governed by the flesh commits sin over and over again. They crucified the the, the Lord Jesus over and over again, because they're not respecting what he did. They're not respecting the gruesome death he incurred. They're not respecting what he had to go through to redeem them. So they don't understand the cross. They don't embrace the cross. Everything that they do is hostile towards the cross of Christ. It's in him, Jesus, that I live, move, and have my being. And when I step into the spirit, when I'm walking in the spirit, I understand that I have been crucified with Christ. I understand that when Christ died, it is as if I died with him. So when I began to uh, give my life over to Christ, it is as if I died with him. God saw Jesus Christ, but he also saw me. So in the nature, in Jesus Christ, I was crucified with him. When I live in Jesus Christ, it's as if my sins were buried because I no longer am under the seed of Adam, but I am the seed of righteousness through Christ Jesus. So I respect his position. I respect what he did. I respect his nature. I don't want to do anything against God by sinning against the cross, by crucifying the Lord Jesus afresh, having to go to him over. And I'm not talking about um, our, our understanding things that we do out of our uh, mistakes and all of those things. But when we have an understanding of the cross, we don't want to take advantage of what he did. We understand that in him we live, move, and have our being. And we understand that in the flesh dwelleth no good thing. So in our uh, uh, comprehension and understanding of what he did, we can always come boldly to the throne of grace to obtain mercy and find help in time of need. We understand that as we are flesh and blood, we are subject to mistakes. We are subject to missing it. We are subject to um, not doing everything right, dotting, dotting every I, crossing every T. But this is why we have the cross. We understand that daily 
we can come boldly. We understand that every day there are new mercies. We remain in him. When we mess up, we come to the cross and we are honest about the things that we have done, the things that we have said. We are honest about our sin nature. We are honest about our need for help. We don't try to hide like Adam and Eve did in the garden. We, we don't try to hide our sins. We don't try to look past the things that we have done that are against the a cross that are against God, that are hostile to God. We don't try to look past those things or act as if we didn't do them. We understand the power of the cross. When we walk in the spirit, we are constantly before God because we know that it's in him that we live, move, and have our being. We know that we can do nothing without him. We know that we can't do anything in our flesh and it takes us always daily going before God, confessing our faults, not only to God, but one to another, to those people that are in your lives, that are safe spaces, that can speak into your weaknesses, that can edify you in God, that can prophesy strength unto you, that can edify you in your giftings, in your calling, that can help push you to be everything that God ordained for you to be. So daily, he is our bread. Daily, he is our substance. Daily, we come before him when we walk in the spirit. We understand the posture of Jesus Christ as our intercessor, as our mediator, as the one who reconciles us back to God, as our savior. We submit every weakness before him. We ask him daily to be our substance. We ask him daily to give us provision. And it's all accomplished through the Holy Spirit. Hear me. You need to have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. It is the Holy Spirit that leads us and guides us into all truth. And when he, the spirit of truth comes, who is the spirit of truth? It is the Holy Spirit. He will guide you into all truth, having a relationship with the Holy Spirit gives you the understanding of the scripture, of, of the uh, a written word of God. He will lead you and guide you not into error, not into interpreting the scriptures of your own accord, not into mixture, perverting the scriptures, adding to the scriptures. <clears throat> when he the spirit of truth comes. Type in the comments, come Holy Spirit. And this is John chapter 16 and 13. <clears throat> he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own. Here it is. He's not speaking on his own merit. He's not speaking in his own authority. He's not speaking to edify himself. He is speaking only what he hears. He will tell you what is to come. So he's speaking what he hears from Jesus. Jesus is the mediator. He's talking to the father. He's interceding. He's praying. He's uh, standing in the gap for you. He's asking the Lord, I know how that feels. I was there. I was hurt. I was betrayed. Give them a chance. Have mercy on them. Show them uh, a kindness. Show them your mercy. Show them your love. He's interceding on your behalf. So when we have a relationship with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is going to reveal. Now here it is. Do not regard the flesh to the degree that you esteem the flesh above the spirit. What is motivating somebody to encourage you? What is motivating someone to prophesy to you? What is motivating somebody to pray for you, to give to you? What is the spirit behind their kindness? What is the spirit behind a stranger's kindness to say, you're beautiful on the very day that you were feeling weak and ugly and 
uh, lost? What is the spirit behind somebody interceding on your behalf, praying for you? It is the spirit of God. It is the Holy Spirit. So when we walk in the spirit, we don't esteem, here it is, the flesh. We don't honor the vessel and disregard the spirit of God. We know that when people prophesy, you are in having an encounter with God. We honor vessels. Hear me. We honor our pastors. We honor our leaders. But even when you're a pastor, even now, while I'm speaking to you, I am the vessel, but it is God's spirit that's motivating. It is God's spirit that's filling my mouth. It is God's spirit that's uh, um, uh, encouraging you. It is God's spirit that's speaking to you. It's not me. It is the spirit that is motivating me to get on on Wednesdays and Fridays and empower those that will hear him through me. It is God's spirit. When we esteem the flesh more than God's spirit, when we esteem the flesh, I'll say it again, more than God's spirit, we are not learning how to recognize and how to walk in the spirit. We're just regarding the vessel and we disregard the words because they came through human flesh. We don't discern, we don't judge prophecy. We don't allow the words to enter into our hearts. We don't adhere to the words and obey the words. So even while I'm speaking to you now, you have a choice to look past Sherry Downs. You have a choice to hear me in the spirit. You have a choice to say, Holy Spirit, and let this word enter into my heart. Let the words that you are speaking through this vessel land in my heart that I might not sin against you, that I might not miss the mark, that I will learn how to be one who can walk in the spirit. Type in the current comments, disregard the flesh, not disgrace the flesh or dishonor the flesh, but you have to look past the flesh. You have to be one to say it was the spirit of God that inspired you. It was the spirit of God that told you to tell me this. It was the spirit of God that empowered you to give, to support, to a soul. It is the spirit of God that empowers a vessel and that vessel, here it is, has a choice to yield to the spirit. That vessel has a choice to yield to the spirit or disregard the spirit. They can say, well, I don't want to hear Sherry. Then they disregard the spirit of God because of the vessel that it came through. So you have to learn how to look past the vessel. Type that in the comments. I'm looking past the vessel and I'm hearing in the spirit. I want to be a sheep that hears the voice of God. I want to be a sheep that recognizes the voice of my savior. I want to be a sheep that hears the spirit of God speaking through people, speaking through experiences, speaking through images. I want to be one that can discern when God is speaking. So my sheep know my voice and a stranger they will not follow my sheep hear me when i call them they recognize me and i know them saith god so we have a whole lot of people that's naming the name of christ that are none of his we have a whole lot of people saying they have the spirit of god and that this is reality everybody can say they are a christ follower but you have to be one that manifests the nature of god you have to be one that manifests the spirit of god you have to be one that is Showing kindness, love, gentleness, meekness, temperance, all of these things in order to manifest or to be one that has the spirit of Christ, the nature of Christ. So we're living from our inner man. We're not living from the outside in, but we're living from the inside out because the Holy Spirit is speaking to your spirit and you are being guided by the spirit that's in you. You are being guided by the uh, natural guidance, natural um uh, navigation system that's in you. You're being guided by what the spirit of God is saying. Do not quench the spirit. So when we are not yielding to the spirit of God, when we are not yielding to the spirit of God, we can quench his spirit. We can quench his spirit 
in us individually and we can quench his spirit corporately. Oftentimes we can disregard his promptings. Oftentimes people can talk us out of following the voice of God. When we're not accustomed to following him, when we're in circles or relationships that want to control us, want to dictate, want to oppress, want to manipulate, want to um, use you for their purposes. You can have people in your life that will quench God's spirit instead of allowing you to freely express what the spirit of God is saying to you and how the spirit of God is leading you. So you have to be cognizant of where you fellowship and with whom you fellowship. Where you fellowship and with whom you fellowship. Who's speaking into your life? Who is showing you the way? Who is saying, this is what I hear God saying for your life. This is These are the gifts that are on your life. This is the anointing that God placed on your life. I see God using you in this way. Remember, God speaks in two and three witnesses within the Jewish culture. Um, things were established. Things were uh, uh, abiding. There was evidence and things became factual when there were two or more, two or three witnesses. Women at that time before Jesus died were not credible witnesses in court. It was on the merit of two men. Two men were able to be witnesses. You, in order to bring any accusation, it just couldn't be one person. It had to be two men in authority who were witnesses. And then they were able to try a case. They were able to have uh, deemed something factual. But we see also as the uh, um, type or the character of God, he spoke in two and three witnesses out of the mouth of two or three. The scripture says, let every word be established. When God was trying to get someone's attention, we see in Samuel, God calling Samuel three times and Eli perceived that it was God that was Eli, who was a mentor to Samuel, perceived that it was God that was calling Samuel. And he was able to mentor Samuel in hearing God's voice and understanding God's nature. I perceive that is God um, calling you. The next time you hear that voice say, here I am, your servant here. So we have to be ones that can recognize God's voice, recognize when he's speaking, recognize the promptings of the spirit. I'm not saying that you'll get two and three witnesses on every occasion, but we should look for those two and three witnesses, because that's oftentimes how God speaks until we get it. He wants that thing to be established in your heart and in the earth concerning you. Two and three witnesses. God establishes things in the earth. He says, I will not do anything in the earth except I reveal it to my servants, the prophets. So here it is. You'll have prophetic voices revealing to you what God says. Now, this is also in the case that you're in prophetic community. But at the same time, God will highlight things to you. God will have you see images. God will have you see signs and things that will point. This is what the Holy Spirit does. He'll have you go away that reveals a sign that will tell you something. Um, that your spirit has already been picking up on inwardly. And you'll be like, man, I had the uh, thought that I should move to Texas. And today I walk past a sign that says, Texas is where it is, the great state of Texas. Great people live in Texas. And then next week, a coworker might say, you know, have you ever thought about moving to Texas? Now that's two and three witnesses. So out of the mouth of two and three witnesses, you want every word to be established and you want to recognize when God is prompting you, when God is moving you, living from the inside out. And as you fellowship and cooperate with the Holy Spirit, he's going to be begin to tell you about your life. He's going to begin to tell you about the mysterious life that you have in Christ Jesus. Now, what does this mean? 
each one of us has a life that God intended for us to live when we became a new created beings, when we became alive unto God, when we stepped out of darkness and into the not marvelous light, we had a new birth. And in that new birth, um, in that new birth, you began to live anew. You had a new start. So you start to experience things on a new level. And the problem is when we're not walking in the spirit, we don't have this understanding. We think we're living a continuation of the life that we live when we were um, born when we came out of our mother's womb. But when you are a new created being and you accept Jesus Christ, you, you're born again. That's what the whole term born again is because you are literally recreated and you are a babe. This is where they talked about being a babe in Christ. You are a babe in Christ. You are an infant in Christ. So what you have to do is start to grow whether or not you came to God when you were 45, whether or not you came to God when you were 25, whether or not you came to God when you were 15. I got saved when I was uh, 14 years old, but I had to grow in my understanding of God. I had to grow in uh, my uh, partnership with the Holy Spirit. So when you started growing, you started being one that Jesus was releasing to you through the Holy Spirit, the life that's hid in Christ. You have a life, a beautiful life. Hear me, everybody that's listening live and everybody that will watch this replay. There is a beautiful life. You may be living in your Christ life, but you're living beneath your privilege because there is a beautiful life that is hid in Christ. He says, in me, you have everything that you need pertaining to life and godliness, but you have to step out of the carnal realm and begin to live in the spiritual realm, saying, God, everything you, everything I need, you have it. Everything that was bought at the cross, I can have access to it through the Holy Spirit. So teach me how to yield to the Spirit. Teach me how to live from my inner man outward. Teach me how to walk in the spirit. Teach me how to respond like Christ. Teach me how to have a natural inclination. Change me, Holy Spirit. Give Holy Spirit permission to change you. Give Holy Spirit permission to shut your mouth up. Give Holy Spirit permission to change your relationships. Give Holy Spirit permission to move out the wrong people and bring in the right people. Give Holy Spirit permission to bring you into the light and the life that you have in Christ Jesus. There is a beautiful life with provision. There's a beautiful life with dreams. There's a beautiful life in God that he wants every son and daughter to ascend to. We have to mature. We have to grow up. We have to become mature in God. No longer babes in Christ sucking on milk. We have to go on to the deeper things. We have to go on to maturity in order for us to receive the fullness of the life that we have that is hid in Christ. There is a life that Christ has for you, but he's trying to get you to the place of maturity. And the world says it like this, fulfilling your greatest potential, living up to your greatest potential, but that's not in the flesh. That is through the cross achieved by the spirit. So when I will manifest my greatest potential, it is because I have yielded to God's spirit so that he can work in me both to will and to do of God's good pleasure so that he can manifest who I am in Christ Jesus. Remember, you have been changed. Your nature has been changed. You are no longer under Adam. Take your idea of you being that baby that your mother birthed, that baby that your father birthed. You are new when you come into Christ. So when you came, when you were 35, 25, 45, however old you are, you know, when you came to Christ, that's when your new life began. And you're supposed to learn and grow and mature and journey in the spirit, okay? From your inner man outward. So the Holy Spirit is trying to work in you to accomplish God's will, both individually and corporately. 
What is God's will for you? What vision, what desires has God placed deep within your heart before time began? When you accepted Christ, here it is. Everything that you need, you came to the earth with, with. but those things were dead. Those things were not alive. Those things were not awakened until you stepped into Christ. So when you stepped into Christ, those things began to be activated by the spirit. The Holy Spirit said, now she stepped over from darkness into light. Let me get inside her and awaken every gift. Let me get inside of him and awaken the calling. Let me get inside of him and awaken the dream that was placed in there before the foundations of the world. Here it is. God told Jeremiah, before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you, Jeremiah. So God had foreknowledge of you. He knew everything that you were ordained to do. He was just waiting on you to catch up. He was just waiting on you to yield. He was just waiting on you to give up everything and follow him. He was just waiting on you to say yes. He was just waiting on you. And there are some things in life that God is just waiting on you. He's waiting on you. He's waiting on you. He's waiting on you to accept who you are. He's waiting on you to stand up for righteousness. He's waiting on you to yield to him. He's waiting on you to hunger and thirst after righteousness. Because the Bible says they who hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled. So it's in him that you live, that you move, and that you have your being. We are not designed to live and do things outside of Jesus Christ. He is divine. We are the branches. We can't do anything without him. This is the spiritual life. And because we are in the flesh and because we live life in the flesh, we are used to doing things on our own. We are used to taking care of ourselves. We're not used to asking somebody. We're not used to depending on somebody. And sometimes we have wounds from earthly relationships to where we become self-reliant, which that is enmity against God because it's in him that we live, move, and have our being. And if he is the vine and we are the branches, the vine and the branches have to coexist. The vine is the source for the branches. So if God is my source, I got to make sure I'm connected daily. I'm not, I got to make sure that I'm having daily check-ins. I got to make sure that I'm walking in the right path, that I'm around the right people, that I'm doing the right things. Sometimes because of the flesh and we live life so long in the flesh, we're used to living as if we did before we accepted Jesus Christ. So we have to learn how to change our ways. We have to learn how to live life in the spirit. Sometimes when you come to God later in life, you've experienced so much of the world. You've experienced living in the flesh for so long. You have to begin to learn how to keep in step with the spirit. And we look at, at Galatians chapter five, where, where Paul was admonishing them to remain in the spirit. They had <clears throat> went from living after the laws doing the works and the rituals and the traditions, and they begin to start living life in the spirit. So when they live life in the spirit, they were learning how to live from the inside out. They were learning how to live guided by the spirit. They were learning how to live with the promptings of the spirit. So Paul said, you began in the spirit. Who hindered you? Who stopped you from obeying this truth that I have delivered unto you? When God awakens your eyes to the truth, walk therein. When God shows you the truth, begin to be one to say, Father, I receive that truth. I embrace that truth in my heart. Holy Spirit, I now yield to you. Holy Spirit, I no longer desire to do it on my own. I want to live and be connected to the vine. I want to be the branch. I want to be a righteous seed. I want to walk in the spirit and not after the flesh. So it is in you to live and move and have your being in God. Jesus said, I must work the works of him who has sent me. I came, Jesus said, to finish the work that my father started. I came 
to complete this thing. I came, this is why Jesus said on the cross, it's finished. My assignment is done. My part of God's great vision is accomplished. But here it is. You and I have a part to play. What is your part? Have you asked God that? What is my part? What is my role? What is my assignment? You didn't just wake me up to righteousness. You didn't just wake me up out of sin. You just didn't bring me out of darkness just to be an apathetic believer, just to sit on my butt and do nothing. What is my role? What is my part? What is my assignment? What have you placed in me to accomplish, to do, to help out your great vision? What is my work that I need to do? What is my uh, position and my role in helping God's great mission, God's great vision? We see in the life of the disciples, when Jesus was sending them out, he told them, go ye therefore, the great commission, corporate mission, go ye therefore into all nations and preach the gospel. Go into the hedges and the highways, compel them to come. So this is the great commission for all of us. But there are the great corporate mission for all of us. But there are individual things that God has placed on the inside of you, assignments, things that you're supposed to do, books that you're supposed to write, businesses that you're supposed to build, land that you're supposed to acquire, things that you're supposed to do in the earth for the glory of the Lord. But we cannot access those things void of the spirit. And I'm going to stop here. And we're going to finish this up on Friday because what I'm finding out is we have a whole lot of believers that want to um, access deeper things of God, but they don't want to fulfill the um, walking in the spirit. We have believers that's on social media having wars. We have people that are arguing and all of these things, which are, it's a mind that's set on the flesh rather than the spirit. And when we will manifest the will of God, when we learn to walk in the spirit, We'll see our houses saved. We'll see our husbands change. We'll see our communities turn around. We'll see our families begin to submit to the will of God. We'll stop losing and settling. We'll stop pretending and become believers who are walking in integrity, who are walking in character, who are walking with the nature of Christ. Your family cannot understand you because they don't understand Christ. They don't understand that they have been translated out of darkness into the marvelous light. They don't understand that when you became a believer, you became a new person. Some of us don't even understand that, but I'm telling you this truth today. When you became a new create, created being, when you accepted Jesus Christ, you started living a new life. And I was sharing this with my mentorship group last night. When you come into Christ and your family is not in Christ, they are the seed of Satan. <laughs> they are the seed of Adam. They have a heart that the enemy can use. But when you are in Christ, you are one who is the seed of righteousness. You are one that the Holy Spirit can fully possess if you let him, but you have to learn how to walk in the spirit and what that means and what that looks like and what the word of God says about the sacrifice that Jesus gave. He gave up his life. Do you understand how vital that is? He didn't do wrong. He didn't sin. It wasn't his thing. He didn't commit the sin, but he sacrificed his life so that you and I can be reconciled back to God and so that we can have this life that is hid in Jesus Christ so that we can receive everything that was supposed to be given to us. We can walk in our inheritance. We can walk in the fullness of life. We can begin to do those things that are written in our book. We can begin to walk out everything that is assigned to us and come out of dead works. Dead works are works that you don't, that you do that are not of faith. Uh, that I, I got to get into that Friday. Dead works. When we don't walk in the spirit, we're walking in dead works. 
dead works, works that don't profit, works that God's not even counting. When it's not in faith, motivated by love. I hope you shared this for somebody because a lot of people don't understand this. And when you have Jesus Christ, when you have the, the spirit of Christ, the Holy Spirit in you, sin just falls off you. You just don't have, you know what they said? I looked at my hands and my hands look new. I looked at my feet, my feet did too. The places I used to go, I don't want to go no more. Because you had a new life. Because you had a supernatural experience. Because you are a new created being. Because God took away sin out of your heart. But if the enemy can blind you to that fact, he can trick you into going back into the sin nature. If you don't understand the work of Holy Spirit, if you don't understand what Jesus Christ did, he didn't come so he can tame the sin nature. He came to take it out of you. I don't even desire to sin. I don't even desire to go uh, do wrong. That's not a desire. Now, I'm not going to say that the enemy doesn't tempt you. I'm not going to say that. But we have the Holy Spirit of promise in us that we can resist Satan and he flees. That's the whole nature of beguiling you, tricking you, lying to you, telling you, no, you, you, you still got that desire to do that. You still have a desire to commit this sin. You still have a desire to go this place. He's telling you those things and talking to your mind, but you got to be led of the spirit. I had a supernatural experience. I'm going to be led by that. I'm going to live by that. Not what the flesh wants. Not what the flesh wants. In Christ, there's fullness of life. You're not missing out. The enemy wants to tell you God is going to hold out on you because a lot of people don't want to journey with God to the degree that they are. He says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. People don't want to seek. They don't want to seek God's rule, God's reign, God's government. They don't want to seek that first. They want the things to be added. They have an understanding of God that is if he's a Santa Claus. No, God wants to grow you and mature you to the degree that you don't waste the blessings, that you understand what he has done and why he has done it. You understand what he has given you. And in order for that to happen, we have to yield and journey and learn to cooperate with the Holy Spirit. Living inward, outward. We have to grow in patience. Seek God's rule, God's reign, and God's government for your life. Understand the kingdom and how he moves through you and why he chose you. Why did God choose you out of all the grands of saying? Why did he choose you? Why did he choose you to save out of, out of your family? Was it just so you could go to church and shout and dance? No, it's for you to manifest. Manifest who he has called you to be. Start asking him. I want to challenge you to do that. Lord, you saved me. Why did you save me? What assignment did you place in me to accomplish? Holy Spirit, teach me how to partner with you so that I can be one that knows how to manifest God's will in the earth. You want to be one that can walk in the spirit and cooperate with the spirit. It is the Holy Spirit. Learn to cherish him. Learn to Walk with him, to hear him, to respect him, to talk to him, to have a friendship with him. Learn to partner with him. What are we doing today, Holy Spirit? What is on the agenda today? Holy Spirit, accomplish the will of the Father through me today. Holy Spirit, give me everything that I need to be successful in this day. Holy Spirit, I am here to partner with you to accomplish the will of the Father. What is his will for this day? Holy Spirit, teach me how to hear you and see you more clearly. Holy Spirit, teach me how to not esteem the flesh more than the spirit. We honor vessels, but we don't lift vessels. 
and we don't disregard vessels. So we have to have an understanding of how the spirit realm works in order to partner with it, in order to yield fully to it. Sometimes we don't have that understanding. So we reject things, but God wants us today to learn how to walk in the spirit. I pray this inspired you. If it inspired you, you can con consider sowing a seed. You can consider sowing the stars on this channel to help support what I am doing. I want to invite you, if you are looking for books, coaching, go to my website, www.touchdownsenterprise.com. I pray this is um, teaching ignited you to purpose and destiny and everything that God would have for you to do. Um, get connected. If you're looking for a mentor, if you're looking for a coach, we can uh, set you up with individual or you can join our coaching um, group. Uh, share this video to somebody that will be edified by it. Father, we thank you for those that heard this message. We pray, Father, that they received it in the spirit that it was given. Thank you for joining all you destiny travelers. Thank you for watching. I love you with the love of the Lord and I love you with my love. Be blessed.